Yo menos de tres minutos. It is my pleasure to be here to present the people who is here for the inauguration of this school. First, uh, we have uh, Professor Alejandro Frank. He is emeritus professor of the National University Autonomous of Mexico, and is also a member of the El Colegio Nacional. He works at the Institute of Nuclear Sciences at the same university. Then, uh, Professor Manuel Torres. Uh, he is the director of the Institute of Physics at the National University Autonomous of Mexico. And finally, um, Professor Rocio Jauregui. She is the chair of this school, and she works at the Insti Institute of Physics at the National University of Mexico. Um, Professor Alejandro Frank will give some uh, words. Hello, good morning. Uh, so, in the name of the organizing committee and as a member of El Colegio Nacional, I want to welcome you all to Mexico City and to the Latin American School of Physics, Marcos Moschinsky, Quantum Correlations. Uh, as we know, the school has a long tradition, going back to 1959, when Marcos Moschinsky, Juan José Jambiaggi from Argentina, and Jose Luis Leite Lopez from Brazil had its first edition here in, in, in Mexico City. It has since been held for, we think, 38 times. And since the last time, and this one, it has been called, uh, the, the, it was named in honor of Marcos Moschinsky for his continuous support to this school. I want to especially thank our lecturers and our invited speakers and our and, uh, the Colegio Nacional, as well as our other sponsors, which made this meeting possible. On this occasion, the organizing committee has tried, has organized a very interesting and fundamental subject. Probably most of you know about Marcos Moschinsky and his role as a pioneer and architect of several generations of Mexican physics, physicists, founder of schools and academies. His work was recognized by all national science awards, ah, by all national science awards and many international ones. I want to share with you an anecdote. When, he, when we celebrated his 120th birthday, 70 of life and 50 in academy, in 1991, John Archibald Wheeler from Princeton University, who met Marcos when he was a graduate student there, could not attend this conference, but sent a letter that uh, was read in one of the sessions. It went like this. Dear Marcos, you arrived to 70? I cannot believe it. Or as Mrs. Niels Bohr said when she found out that Robert Frisch was retiring, I can't understand it. All young people I know are retiring. You, I am sure, are not retiring and, you won't, ever, and you, ever, you won't retire ever. You have too much creative impulse, too much a sense of responsibility, too much love for our wonderful discipline. I want to thank you especially for three things. You have made group theory to have impact in nearly every field of physics. You have educated three generations of scientists in that great country for which I have maintained a special affection all my life. And lastly, but not less important, you have found a very special place in the hearts 
of your old Princeton colleagues, including Eugene Wigner and me. In the almost 20 years elapsed since then, and until Marcos' passing, he never retired. Marcos continued his academic work with the same energy, intelligence, and passion of his whole life. The Marcos Moschinsky Latin American School of Physics must be honored to carry his name. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Professor Rocio Jauregui is giving us some awards for this inauguration. Uh, good morning. Uh, I want to thank everyone that is here so early. And uh, I also want to thank uh, Colegio Nacional in the, in the names of Octavio Novaro and Alejandro Frank, that are the coordinators of the school. In this edition, the lab is devoted to the topic of quantum correlations. We know that this is, this is a central concept in the contemporary physics, whose investigation has allowed a deeper understanding of the fundamentals of quantum mechanics. A lab this year will focus on recent experimental research, theoretical developments to properly uh, characterize and control quantum correlations in physics systems. We will listen to lecturers that will talk about isolated ultracold ions, the generate quantum cases, cavity QED systems, thermal clouds or of standard and the atoms interacting with the electromagnetic classical and quantum fields. The presence of all the students from Latin America, the presence of the uh, researchers that uh, are here, and uh, the support of Sociedad Mexicana de Física, UNAM, uh, was very, very important for this school, and we just want to start. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> okay, so this is start. Empezamos, ¿no? Empezamos. So we will start this morning session uh, with the presence of Professor Edward Hines. Oh. I think we should wait. You know, wait a minute. Um, Professor Edward Hines will give you a course of five hours entitled Doing Fundamental Physics with Ultracold Atoms and Molecules. Professor, uh, I will give you a few words about Professor Hines. Uh, Professor Hines uh, is in the Department of Physics at the Imperial College in London. In particular, he belongs to the Center for Cold Matter. Some of the problems he is involved are measurement of the electron electric dipole moment, sensing small forces using atom interferometry, and nanophotonics, uh, specifically creation of single photons using single molecules. So with us, Professor Edward Hines. I have to decide where to stand. I think here is OK. So I want to begin uh, by talking about interferometry. And I think interferometry is a good way to start discussing quantum correlations, because uh, it's a, a central feature of, of interferometry, at least the kind of interferometry that I'm going to talk about, that there are quantum correlations uh, of a very simple kind. I'm an experimentalist. I will try to have rather few equations, uh, but I hope that you will ask questions if, uh, if things are not clear. I'm told that there's a question time of 10 minutes at the end, but my feeling is if, if something comes to your mind while I'm speaking and you're anxious to find something out, just raise your hand or call out and I will try to notice you and we can, and we can discuss. So yes, I work in the Center for Cold Matter at Imperial College, where we have a number of experiments uh, which use quantum correlations in many different ways. And uh, so the first one I want to tell you about is, is atom interferometry. In the UK, uh, as actually in the rest of Europe now, there is a strong push 
towards applications and devices. We are required to use quantum mechanics to make uh, useful instruments and to uh, push forward uh, industry. And so a question that I've often asked is, is why are atoms good for sensing? And interferometry is indeed good for sensing, so let me begin with this uh, simple question. Why do atoms make good inertial sensors? Well, one point, of course, is that a, to very high accuracy, every atom of hydrogen, let's say, is identical to every other atom of hydrogen, or rubidium, or whatever atom you use. Unlike uh, sensors that are man-made, which vary from one to another. And the consequence of that, of course, is, uh, is that their behavior is constant. So they're, they're identical between each other and also invariant uh, over time. And a very interesting thing about quantum systems is that they don't wear out. So the electrons in the atom never get tired. Right? They just keep going around the same. And you, you smile. I smile too. But it's because for us it's natural. But for people who, 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 build, who fabricate devices, this is an amazing and fundamental point. Uh, atoms, of course, have mass, and therefore they feel inertial forces uh, in a way that, that photons do not. And this can make them interesting for sensing acceleration, and that will be a central part of what I want to say to you today. And finally, the atom has an optical dipole, an electric dipole, which can oscillate at optical frequencies, and so it couples well to the laser. Well, of course it couples well to the laser because the laser light is made by the atoms whose dipole is oscillating. But they live in harmony in a way that is very important for, for technology. So these are some of the reasons why I like to think about atoms for inertial sensing. And the last point uh, is that because of the rules of quantum mechanics, it's possible to build very sensitive devices. In fact, most of the sensitive devices that you can imagine using atoms and light rely on, on uh, interferometry using the, using the weather, the waves that are, are fundamental to quantum mechanics. So I don't really need to tell you this because I think you all learned it in school, in high school, but here's the idea of an interferometer. A wave goes in and then we have a splitter. So the wave travels on two paths and then these two mirrors here, their function is only to bring those two paths back together. And then finally, there is another splitter. And along these two routes, the waves are in phase coming out this way and out of phase coming out that way. Then you can imagine that we might change the phase difference between the two paths. So let me put some gas in here and alter the wavelength slightly. And now you see that this path has slipped by half a wavelength relative to the other path. And so now these are out of phase and these waves are in phase. And the half a cycle phase 